on. Welcome to Major Keys. I'm Shantiana Keys here with Monica McNutt, host and analyst. Thank you so much for joining me today, Monica. Thanks for having me, Shantiana. All right, so the way we start this every episode, can you give me your sports journey in 60 seconds? So from the very beginning, where you found sport to where you are now. Hmm, my dad was a high school referee. I tagged along with him, fell in love with basketball, went to Georgetown, was introduced to journalism, had the bug to combine sports and journalism, got a graduate degree from Maryland and began plugging along from there locally. And here I am. Okay, so you're really good at challenges, it seems. Okay, I don't even think that was 30 seconds. Uh, I think that's succinct enough. I've definitely made the time. I don't know if I can include all the important details, but that's the gist of it. I think that's the gist. Uh, did you play any other sports growing up besides basketball? I played tennis for a little while. Tennis, okay. Uh, what does sports teach you? I know, you know, we all take away something from being an athlete. What does sports teach you at the end of the day? Resiliency and commitment. If ever I question whether I have given something my all, I can always compare it to all the sacrifices that I was willing to make when I was playing ball because it got a lot out of me and the game was good to me, but it really showed me what hard work looks like and it is forever my personal barometer for how committed I am to something. And you've been covering uh, the W. Well, you've been covering a lot of things lately, okay? But you've been covering the WNBA this season, and the league is in its 25th year. Uh, did you have any role models in the league when you were growing up? Uh, so Charles is on my shirt, but in particular from that comments team, it was Cynthia Cooper. I just could not get enough of Coop and all that she brought to the table, and then just kind of consuming the W all together as a whole at. 11, 12, um, it just put these incredibly powerful and talented women on the largest stage in my mind. And it just was, I don't even know that at that age, you comprehend all that you're seeing until, you know, 15 years later, you sit back and you can reflect on why you love the game so much. And it's because you saw women, part of it at least, is because you got to see women that look like you and you could see this potential incredible payout from this and you can hear their stories and connect with them. And of course, they're literally playing excellent basketball. So you can grow from watching and studying their game. Yeah, we've been really lucky to see women playing basketball on TV. Were there any other sports that you, or any other role models that you saw and you thought, you know, I want to be like that person? It doesn't have to be sports in particular, but any role models that kind of have shown you the way to, you know, where you are today? I think through school, I was fortunate to have really good teachers. Um, my third grade teacher, his last name was Jeter. I had an English teacher in there. Her last name was Brown in, um, middle school. I, I just had, I was fortunate to have teachers that were able to show up and connect with me, even if it was just for that season. And so my personal experience, my mom and dad, but my mom more so, were very deliberate about putting Black professionals around us. I grew up in Prince George's County, which is one of those pockets in the country where Black people live really well. Of course, we got our other stuff too, but I think there were role models all around me. And again, it's one of those things that it doesn't even register that there's a limit to what I'm supposed to be able to do because of my gender or the color of my skin, because everybody around me was a professional. Um, and so I think my mom is a huge role model in terms of the vision and the commitment and all that she's been to our family as, as our mom, to my sister and I, and then a wife, of course, to my dad. Um, but that's, a, I'm really kind of thinking it through that, Shantiana, outside of, you know, the WNBA in terms of what basketball could do for me and a college basketball too. I, there were just lots of people that I was fortunate to be able to say I could look up to at different seasons in my life and for different reasons. You're someone that I see on TV and I think, you know, how important representation is for me, you know, looking at you and seeing how authentic you show up on camera um, is something that I absolutely admire. Why has that been important to you throughout your career? You know, I almost hate that word. <laughs> authentic? I almost hate it. Like, okay. I just... I don't know. It, it is, I think it's starting to lose 
some of his gravitas. Fair. Um, we throw it around a little bit flippantly to me. Um, I, I, I don't know how to be anybody else. Right. And maybe this is just my personal journey. Like I remember in the media space, I'm bad at TV anchor voice. I don't have, I just, it doesn't work for me. Um, you know, I am not the most still and my face gives away everything. And being anybody other than me, it just doesn't work for me. Now, were there moments in this journey where it was kind of like, hmm, is this going to work? For certain. And I remember very clearly back in my apartment in Florida um, after my second layoff in the span of three years and having a little bit of a hissy fit and a moment with, a moment with God, like, ugh, if there's all of this, what it's supposed to look like, and then there's me. And I promise you, Shantiana, it was very clearly in my spirit, don't you think I know that, was what I heard. And so it was one of those moments where I was like, well, I, I, I can't stop. I only know how to move forward. I can only be me. And so you continue to show up with that commitment and that hard work that I mentioned that playing basketball had taught me. So I would be lying to you if I said everything that has come my way, I couldn't foresee. I believe that these things could come. In the midst of my layoff season, I remember looking at some of my counterparts on television thinking, I'm not bad. Why isn't this coming to me? But all of our journeys are different. And in hindsight, I wouldn't change a thing. And so for me, the only thing that I was not willing to budge on was my hair when I got into this space. So this idea of like authenticity is like, no, I wanted to work out and I've never liked long hair. Like I wanted to cut my hair as a sixth grader. And my mom was like, no, you're gonna look too grown. Um, and so I cannot say that, and maybe that is the definition of authenticity, of, of authenticity but I can't say that it was ever Ooh, I'm going to be my authentic self. It's like, no, it, I'm, I'm just me trying to make waves in this space. But I mean, you say, you know, that it was more of a practical decision, right? But as Black women, there are, there's, well, for all women, but particularly Black women, there is a box, you know, they want to put us in, they want us to look a certain way, which you did mention. And so for me, though, it's very practical that you showed up the way that you did and that you were being, you know, you could only be yourself. I think that is much harder uh, than trying to fit in the box. I think, you know, we've, we've done it for decades trying to fit into a, into a box. So showing up as yourself is the hard thing to do. So I, I would say, I think it can be overused, but I truly do mean it when I do say, when I say that to you, is that, you know, the first time I heard you on a broadcast, yeah. I thought that immediately. <laughs> Well, and I don't, I apologize if that came off dismissive, but I'm, I'm sort of spitballing with you, my fellow yeah. sister oh. in this space, right? Like yeah. there is absolute power in authenticity, but for me, and I don't know if you credit it to my upbringing, there really wasn't a choice. You know what I mean? Okay. And yeah. so the idea of, I was never going to go get 18 inches of hair to hang off my head. Like I just was never going to do that. Okay. Now, did I have to dress a certain way in terms of understanding the space that I was in? Was I cognizant of those things? Yes. Did that mean I was trying to fit a box or was I trying to be professional or are those things one and the same? And so I think innately, and I guess I got to credit my parents on this one. It was about me being able to look in the mirror at the end of the day and be good, whether this career path panned out or not. Now, fast forward, it warms my heart to hear you say that. And it has become part of my mandate to continue to remain who I am to show that there's room for all of us. And we always couch this conversation around diversity like it's these big holders of opportunities, which quite frankly are often white men sitting at this table and us, the Lily, not, not even Lily, but oh, woe is us, the diverse candidate who doesn't have these opportunity. Like we're the one at the disadvantage when the reality is they need us just as badly. Right. Um, and so it has become very powerful and I'm very thankful for it. But I, there was not a click switch moment in my mind where it was like, I'm gonna shave my hair to stand out or cut my hair. To, you know what I mean? Like right. I was an athlete. This worked for my lifestyle as an athlete. I, I have been fitter at points in my life. The pandemic got to all of us. <laughs> I am a fit person. Um, <laughs> this 
works for my life. And it just was a sacrifice that I, I couldn't even really fathom for a job. Like, what? Right. what? <laughs> true, true. Okay. I can understand that. Absolutely. And you talked about, you know, the, you couldn't have foreseen, or maybe you hadn't foreseen the last year. Um, I'm not sure anybody, right? Like, I mean, the, you've had a meteoric rise at the end of the day, like, and there was a video that went viral on social media, uh, you know, saying, give it a year. What has been the, you know, the greatest part, I guess, of the last year for you? So it's funny because I kind of feel like that video is a little bit fraud. <laughs> fraud? <laughs> It is, it, caps, it captures an incredible year. Right. And my girl, Melanie Dunning, who did that for me and surprised me and blessed my socks off, um, she did a great job. But you gotta know that that year was 10 years in the making. Right, right. Right? Right. Um, and so I've, I literally, you know, Instagram was not acting right the other day. I was gonna do a TikTok and just kind of, I mean, a reel rather, and explain that. And I have pulled some YouTube clips, girl, 10, seven, four years old. Um, the past year has been incredible, but the past year is a byproduct of 10 years. Absolutely. Um, and so I think there's a couple things that I say, if I can narrow my, my slogans down to three, one, you take yourself with you wherever you go. And I'm very proud of that person. Not that it means I get along with everybody, not that I'm everybody's cup of tea, but I'm gonna show up with energy, passion, um, and be respectful, right? Two, you got to give it time, whatever it is. And yes, the past year has been incredible. Thank you, God. But I've given it 10 years, 11 years now, you know, like you got to give it time. Um, and I think three, you've got to continue to be your own advocate. Um, somebody asked me recently about shooting my shot. And I was sitting and thinking, Shantana, at every step of my career, to some degree, I have shot my shot. And now, again, similar to the hair thing, that's who I am as a person, right? Like, I holler at dudes, like, whatever. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I got nothing to lose. Right. Um, but because this space is so saturated and so competitive, closed mouths absolutely do not get fed. Um, and so when I look at the past year, not only is it a byproduct of my work for 10 years, in particular this year, incredible women that are friends and mentors that have stood beside me as allies, and not just women people that were willing to give me an opportunity. And of course, you know, I show up and kick the door down and then here we are. Um, so this thing is not done in a vacuum. While I'm the person that you might see on camera, there's so many people behind me that have championed my cause, that are going over tape with me, helping me get better. Um, and so I'm, I'm really thankful for that. I'm thankful for the community that I've been able to develop and the support that I've been able to garner. I mean, even watching it, right? You don't think that, oh, in a year you, became this talented and, you know, got to the places you were, you were in. It's just, you know, that, that opportunity that sparked, again, this meteoric or phenomenon. So I've been excited to watch. Again, I've, I've seen you for a few years now. And, you know, for somebody who's in the same space, it is very encouraging to see. So I'm waiting for my year. I'm putting in the work in between, but I'm waiting for my year for sure. Come on. <laughs> Listen, honey, it's coming. And I think, I, that part, Shantiana, is it though. Like you got to continue to put in your work and you got to believe. And like, I literally, 2018, like December, 2018, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go from substitute teaching, which I've been doing at that point to keep it all together to are there full-time opportunities at these schools I've been at? Like I had let it go. Um, and uh, I shouldn't say let it go, but I had let it go from a sense of trying to force it. I was willing to go back and teach do it on the side and just kind of keep trudging at it, but understand that this is not the only thing in life that fulfills me, right? Like it was such an important exercise in realizing how well my heart is taken care of, the other things in which my, I can be involved in the people in my life that help make me whole. And now girl, I reflect back. I don't have no time to play nobody's alumni league. My grandparents have since passed, but I definitely don't have no time to just kick it with them. Like I can't pick up my God baby from school. Like there's so much give and take in, the, in this big picture called life that I think when we narrow in too closely on any one thing, we miss the beauty of the season. Beautiful, beautifully said. Now we're gonna switch gears a little bit. Um, there are two segments. The first one is called, it's a vibe, all right? So what is something that you're into right now 
It could be literally anything that you would say, it's a vibe. Ooh. Um, all right, two things. One is sort of work-related. One is just kind of life-related. Um, I am very much into deliberate candles right now. Like, actually, as a matter of fact, I'm going to expand that out to self-care routines, particularly bedtime routines. Okay. Like, um, my boyfriend randomly sent me these shower tablets. Girl, and I'm obsessed. I had them put on uh, Amazon monthly subscribe. Um, I'm into bath bombs. I'm, when I say deliberate candles, I mean scents that help you relax, lavender, bergamot, like that kind of deal. Um, uh, salt lamps, yellow light. Like I think the pandemic, because literally I'm sitting in my house with three studio quality lights, we were all on all day that it just kind of renewed my focus into making sure that I'm getting quality rest and then I'm setting myself up at bedtime. So that's definitely a vibe for me. Like, yes, we love our favorite R&B, go to bed songs, but I'm also into massage sounds because I got the most amazing massages in Mexico and it just takes me back to that like moment to relax. Um, so that's definitely a vibe in terms of winding down and um, getting your rest because girl, we on all the time, like you need your rest. Um, and then two, I think athletes doing their own thing on pods is such a vibe. Like this morning, I listened to Funky Friday with uh, Cam Newton and his dad, and it's such a vibe. I'm a huge fan of I Am Athlete. Um, I think those brothers do a great job. Uh, Asia Wilson and Nafisa Collar have a pod. I like, I'm just into athletes taking control of the space and saying what they got to say. Absolutely. Um, all right, so the next segment is a lightning round, which I'm sure you've done. So keeping the answers quick and short, and we're going to move through them, all right? All right, so your favorite women's sports moment of all time? It had to be championship number three for the Houston Comets as a little kid. Personally, as an adult, I was in the building when the Washington Mystics won their WNBA title, which was really dope. Hometown team? That's my hometown team, yes. Okay, and your dream sporting event to attend? I'd like to get to the Super Bowl. Okay. And the NBA Finals. I mean, basketball is my first love, but those two. Okay. Dream sporting event to cover. And you've covered the Olympics this year, so. So I would still like to get to the Olympics in person. So I'm okay. going to put that there. All right. Favorite sports moment of your career? Oh, man. I think beating Tennessee my senior year in the Virgin Islands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back when um, we were powerhouse, right? Uh, yeah, it was. It, so it was funny, not funny, but it was interesting. I graduated in 2011. I want to say Pat Summit um, made her Alzheimer's public two years ish later. And so I remember thinking, just from a competitive standpoint, did we get their best shot? That's neither here nor there. The record stands. And obviously, she's a giant in the women's basketball game. But I remember after that game, the power went out in the gym and they had given us book bags because we won. And I, I remember it was like, put your book bags on your head. We got haters. It was, <laughs> it was just a really great one with my teammates and the kind of something um, we were really proud of. All right. And if you couldn't have played basketball, what sport would you have liked to try? Tennis. I started with tennis. Okay. And the last one, certified lover boy or Donda? So I was having this conversation with my co-host last night, and I know that these are supposed to be rapid fire answers. I'm gonna go Donda, but here's why. I'm into the journey with artists. Whether you love them, hate them, disagree, if I think enough of you to turn on your music, I want you to take me somewhere. And it, however you feel about Kanye, he is taking us on a journey. Yes. And I literally turned on Certified Lover Boy and was like, wait, is this Take Care from college? Like, what, what's going on? Um, and not that it's a bad album, yeah. but it, it just didn't take me on a journey. Like, I don't want to be singing about my multiple hoes no more. Like, I'm trying to be in this happy, stable relationship and we moving forward and working on some other things. <laughs> trying to be grown, trying to grow up. Oh. Just trying to be grown, Shanti. I'm just trying to be grown. All right, last question. I asked all the guests, what is one major key, so piece of advice that you would give to those watching? Take yourself with you wherever you go. And I can't define that, you know what I mean? But like, if you look in the mirror and you good, then let the chips fall where they may if you carry that person with you. Um, and this idea that we're all gonna be universally liked is like, okay. I think you can have professional relationships with people, but you know what I'm saying? Like, 
you so take yourself with you wherever you go and have a healthy relationship with no like mm. you can use no you can receive no it shouldn't necessarily decimate all of your hopes and dreams and you definitely should use it to set boundaries and um make people understand how to treat you oh all all, all that all that need to bottle that write that down but thank you monica again we talked about this last year being huge for you but i know the future is even brighter so I appreciate you coming on and you know sharing your journey with us as well as some some good tips and some advice thank you for having me shantiana i hope i dropped a key or two ah. you did you did definitely <laughs> I got the keys.